Brandon with BeesusProductions.com here doing my first video blog. As I mentioned in my last blog post, I wanted to give video dev blogging a try, so without further ado, I will uh, showcase some of the features I've implemented into my yet unnamed platforming game created with Unity 3D. First and foremost here, I've got an explosive variant of the standard box. Uh, the way that the standard box works is that upon taking impact damage, either by being thrown or dropped for example, it will instantiate the following objects in this list, which in this case would be the broken box mesh and the smoke particles, at the point of destruction. Uh, working in a very similar manner here, I'm just instantiating an explosion prefab I've created instead. Uh, within this explosion prefab, I'm using a sphere collider to dictate the area of effect, my explosion script to pass the radius, the damage, and the power variables to the uh, to the sphere collider and the deal damage script. Anybody who's used the uh, physics platforming kit for Unity would know that the deal damage script is responsible for uh, taking away health from all of the objects, whether it be a character, the player, an enemy, or even the boxes themselves. Uh, without it, uh, we would be unable to destroy these boxes and the explosion force itself would simply push the rigid bodies over, never actually destroying them. Uh, the way I have it set up now, instead the explosion itself will actually destroy the object before it uh, applies the explosion force. You can see this a little better here if I add this explosion effect itself to the uh, scene. Anything within this sphere radius basically will be destroyed. It'll issue the deal damage, which in this case uh, my explosion is currently set to three, so it'll take away three health from the crates. As you can see, the crates themselves have three health anyhow. So basically it'll destroy the crates, after which it will uh, push the objects away using the uh, add explosion force to the rigid body. And then at that point, uh, the broxes themselves I've set up to despawn. Uh, the objects, uh, the Specifically, the broken box mesh itself, I've uh, added a script to this that will fade them out after a certain amount of time here. So let's give it a shot. I'll show you how it works. Um, well, forgot I left the explosion effect here in my scene. Let's go ahead and take that out or else it's just going to explode every time we start our game here. All right, so here we are in game. Got my regular boxes, still function as you'd expect. Throw them and they break. And with the destroy object here, I fade them out. Otherwise, we'd have a scene littered with these objects. So I've stuck one of these explosive boxes inside of this whole little mesh or this whole little uh, cluster of boxes, which will cause a chain reaction. First off, though, I'll just show basic box barely hit this as expected. Now if we get a more direct hit we cause a huge chain reaction to the box inside and now we're left with all these particles and a lower frame rate so we spawn them out and we go back to normal. As mentioned since it does have the deal damage script upon throwing this at an enemy we will cause damage to them as well. Normally they can only be damaged by jumping on them but a box is a little bit quicker of a death. Second I've uh, implemented what I've called the transformation cards here. Upon picking these up, you will grant the player new abilities, much like the power boxes in the Mario 64 games, or I shouldn't say games, in Mario 64 itself, or uh, other power-ups that you might expect from games. So upon touching these, we will transform our character mesh and give them new abilities. For example, we have an astronaut character here, which, when active, greatly reduces the gravity in the scene, specifically on the player allowing you to uh, easily reach higher areas otherwise inaccessible. And upon fading out, gravity goes back to normal. For my next object, I will show you, uh, upon entering the water, we get a lot of drag added to the player. Basically, it's like moving in slow motion. And not sure if you can hear that or not, but upon the camera entering the water, we get a nice little ambient noise. But uh, getting back to the card itself, we are very slow to move underwater here a bit arduous if you will and upon collecting this now we move underwater just like we were outside of the water so these uh... this will make traversing water much much easier and much less tedious and upon fading out we restore the drag values originally to the player while underwater so we're back to the slow movement finally a little fun one i've got here uh, is the ninja power up originally my plan was to uh, require this ninja power up in order to wall jump however I've since reverted that change and speaking of I've reverted the wall jump entirely we no longer stick to the walls as previously 
you know, we don't get the wall sliding effect anymore. Instead, we can simply kick off the wall as normal. Much more in the vein of Mario 64 instead of Mario Sunshine. However, now I'll show you the uh, Ninja Power Up, which, as you can see, greatly increases our movement speed. We get a new run animation, and uh, we can jump much farther than previously. And again, upon expiring, we revert back to the normal, normal speeds again. So with that, those are the uh, basic features I've implemented in terms of the platforming itself. On a side note here, I have uh, created a whole new little sub-mini game, if you will, which I will demonstrate now in the form of a kart racer. So once this loads up here, take a look, and we got our player character here inside of a kart. Uh, at the moment, I'm just using kind of a preset course that came with a uh, asset pack, and I've kind of modified it a bit to accommodate my cart by adding our standard coins, a bite much larger. So we'll go ahead and test this out, and I'll show you I got basic cart mechanics. While it may not be as smooth or as intuitive as uh, Mario Kart 64 or Diddy Kong Racing, we do have a fully functioning cart. Coins will chase us as we pass by them. And as mentioned, I do have a drift mechanic. Uh, it's not quite perfected yet. I'm still playing with a lot of the values, because if you turn too sharply while drifting, you will come to a near stop. So we'll go ahead and uh, get a sharper curve here. But in the meantime, I do have a fully functioning cart, complete with animations. Our player turns and leans. We even have loops that we will take here. Physics engine is up to the task of handling those quite nicely. And as mentioned, here's the drift mechanic. Take a corner a little sharper, which didn't go so well for me there. Player looks behind while backing up, and we'll go forward again. The drifting is still a work in progress, as mentioned, because if you do drift too sharp, you do uh, come to a near stop here. As you'd expect with real-life friction, however, that doesn't seem to translate well into games, as anybody who's played a, a modern kart racer or even a classic kart racer can attest to. So uh, with that, I do have uh, this pretty well established. Still working on how I'm going to implement it, but I was thinking something along the lines of uh, Sonic Adventure's Twinkle Circuit, and that you can enter a, a little sub-area within the main overworld and just kind of get a little break from the standard platforming, allowing you to just do some time trials or uh, maybe even using this to traverse uh, to a farther area later on in the game and acquiring a power card at the end of that. So uh, with that, that'll wrap up my first video dev blog here. I will probably follow up with many more in the future as I add new features. So hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd be glad to share how I did many of these objects or many of these uh, functions with you. Maybe I won't share my code, but I'll be glad to share my logic. So uh, with that, take care. We'll talk to you soon.